There are a few architects who have influenced Sydney's skyline as much as the late Harry Seidler has. Trained and inspired by Oscar Niemeyer and renowned Bauhaus architects Walter Gropius and Marcel Breuer, the former Austrian refugee moved to Australia in 1948. His Australian architectural heritage includes an array of pioneering skyscrapers, residential towers and houses. Amongst them is the Harry and Penelope Seidler House in Sydney's leafy Calera suburb, the family home which he designed together with his wife, who still lives there today. We used to spend weekends driving around looking for the ideal block of land to build our own perfect house. We found this land and oh, it's a very ch it's an architect's block, steeply sloping, but it had all the things we liked. It had wonderful natural bushland, it had a waterfall when it was raining, it was abundant with nature and we loved it. The colonial houses were very respectful of the harsh nature here. And I think this house is too. It takes advantage of the, the beautiful Australian landscape. I mean, the landscape is part of the house. I can't imagine this house being put anywhere else. I mean, it would look rather ridiculous, actually. There are four half levels joined by a stair and then pulled apart so that there's a void in the middle of where the staircase is. From everywhere in the house you see another part of the house. It's a family house, there's a playroom which opens out to the outside. They, they used to, of course, like all children, play hide and seek and, you know, they complained that there wasn't enough hiding places. <laughs> it's a reinforced concrete frame, but within that, it's got the wooden ceiling. It's a concrete roof, but there's a wooden ceiling and the space between has got all the ducts for air conditioning and heating. And I think that gives a very warm feeling and the Tasmanian mountain ash goes right through and outside under the eaves. And I think the house has a sort of medieval character. You enter through a bridge, which is like a moat, and it's stone and it's concrete and there are rugs. I think it's sort of medieval modern. <laughs> We're very fond of nature, but the house doesn't pretend to be natural. It's in stark contrast to nature itself, but everywhere you look, you're aware of the nature. There's no room in the house that doesn't get ample daylight. And the lighting in the house too is quite significant. It hasn't changed since we moved here. It's all built in lights and some of the actual globes haven't been changed since we moved in. When the house was finished, we were looking for the right piece for the right walls and there are three particularly major works here. The Frank Stella, which is done in what was called the playroom, and the Sam Francis, which is behind me, and the Helen Frankenthaler. Other artworks change from time to time, but these three major pieces dominated, and I think they go very well with nature and the house. It's site-specific, if you like. The chairs are all classic modern chairs. We got them when they were very new in about 1960 and they're still very beautiful. The chairs in this room, that's the classic Eames lounge chair. And the dining chairs and the chairs in the study are all by Marcel Breuer, Harry worked with him and they had only just started remaking these chairs in the 60s so they were quite new actually. The ones on the terrace are so-called Indian campaign chairs which come apart and put together and they haven't changed. He loved this house because it was his and we were the clients so we set the bar and that was it. It's the biggest house Harry had designed at that stage and, you know, if you don't get your own house right, <laughs> it was quite a challenge. We wanted it to be a major statement. 
People thought it very strange to have exposed concrete in a house. I think people respond to the house better now than they used to. People would come in and, you know, they didn't dislike it, but they didn't respond in a way that they do now. They come in and they immediately appreciate the space and the materials and the warmth of the house. I think it's a very warm house in spite of those hard materials. We wanted this house to be permanent. Harry's early houses were very beautiful, but they were very delicate. And this house, we wanted it to be more durable. Next year will be 50 years since we've been here. And I think we've done that, you know. This house is a time capsule of the 1960s. The whole house, uh, nothing has changed with no alterations, no additions, nothing. And that's the way I like it. <laughs> unfortunately, I'm not quite as frozen in the 60s. I'm a bit older and unfortunately my husband's not with us anymore. But it gives me a lot of pleasure to walk into the house and be surrounded by nature and see our life spread out before, before me. For Monocle in Sydney, I'm Pauline Den Hartog-Jager.